once the largest land in Europe, now on the course of an alarming decline. Lithuania mostly gets bundled with the rest of its Baltic siblings, although it's not just a one-of-a-kind story, but a distinct genre in itself. Although one that is, unfortunately, moving closer to the fate of silent films than of comic book movies. The country suffered great human losses during the occupations of great powers in the 20th century. Yet, absurdly, those tragic figures are numerically dwarfed by the ones expecting the country due to joining a great alliance willingly. Fortunately, far less sinister in nature, yet still alarming. Yet due to its almost unbelievable history, outlandish sites and geographical placement, the explanation and exploration of Lithuania will be as rich with fun gems as there are lakes in it. Located on the shores of the Baltic Sea in the northeastern part of Europe, Lithuania has undergone a considerably downsizing since the days we opened with and is now the 24th largest country on the continent, with 65,300 km square of landmass, making it the 124th largest country in the world. Actually, almost identical to the size of Sri Lanka and one of their neighbors, Latvia. Lithuania gets the bragging rights of being both the biggest and the most populous Baltic state though, beating Estonia and aforementioned Latvia. There are about 2.8 million people living here, making the country rank 35th in Europe and 144th in the world in terms of population. Bordering Latvia to the north, Belarus on the east and south, Poland to the south and Russia's territory of Kaliningrad on the southwest, for a total of 1,574 kilometers of borders, the longest of which is with Belarus at 680 kilometers. Lithuania also has a coastline of 262 kilometers and shares a maritime border with Sweden. Internally, the country is divided into 10 counties, the largest and most populous one being the one centered around the capital city of Vilnius, which is also the largest city in the country. The city got its name after the Vilnia River, which flows and connects with a big river of Neris that flows through the heart of the city. Vilnia, meaning ripple in Lithuanian, therefore makes sense in the naming. The city is filled with around 550,000 people and is located just 30 kilometers from the border with Belarus and it's about twice the population size of the runner-up Kaunas, as it holds 21% of Lithuania's total population in its urban center alone. But Vilnius isn't just only the cultural and economical center of Lithuania, but also a geographical center of Europe, at least according to some, as there are contestants for the honors, depending on who and what you measure. Yet the Guinness Book of World Records does recognize the nearby village of Giria as the epicenter of the old continent which is another word for Europe if that wasn't clear. The second largest city is, as we mentioned, Kaunas and has about 290,000 people, meaning that the two biggest cities in Lithuania amount to about 31% of the total populace. Although, there are two more cities with populations higher than 100,000. Of these two, Klaipeda is the more notable one as it is the port city and is located as a gate to one of the country's most noteworthy geographical features, the Lithuanian Sahara, or more commonly named the Coronian Spit. A 98 km long, thin and curved sand dune spit that separates the Kurunian lagoon from the Baltic Sea coast. Overall, Lithuania is a predominantly lowlands country, with the highest point being just 293.84 meters tall. The Augstoyas Hill holds this very shy height record of the nation. Although that is not quite true actually, considering that the Vilnius TV tower stands at 326 meters. So the highest point should go to the Vilnius Televisios Bokstas. And you might say my pronunciation might have been a bit off so far, which is strange considering I should have had a lot of time practicing Lithuanian as it is a very old language. In fact, it's one of the oldest languages in the world today, it's the oldest living Indo-European language of Europe. But moving back to things being tall or well, the opposite, what Lithuania lacks in terms of mountains, it makes up in other recognizable reliefs such as already mentioned the Kronian Lagoon which it shares with Russia's son studying abroad, Kaliningrad. This mostly freshwater lagoon has a total size of almost 1.6 thousand kilometers square, but the Lithuanian part is only 381 kilometers square. Yet, Lithuania has the better use for it as Klaipeda is the only port. Besides being the former base of the Teutonic Knights, the lagoon was formed 3000 years before our era, as the winds created the Kronian Spit Dune, which split the two bodies of water. But according to Baltic myths, which we of course prefer, the Kronian Spit was formed by a giantess named Naringa to protect her home from the rage of Naglis, an evil dragon. With this inviting coast, Lithuania's climate is both maritime and continental and the country as a whole is located in a cool temperature zone, meaning they have moderately warm summers and moderately cold winters. 
The average temperature in the hottest month of July sits at only 17 degrees Celsius, while in the winter it's around minus 5 degrees Celsius. But the moderate weather didn't stop the around 2.4 million foreign tourists from spending a night in the country in 2021, most of them from their close neighbors Poland and Latvia. So we stated that on the west side of Lithuania we have a lot of water, right? But the fact is that the east side also has its fair share of water, in the form of lakes. There are nearly 3,000 lakes larger than one hectare across the territory overall, supplemented by 1,600 ponds. Land reclamation and swamp drainage has been of major importance to the Lithuanians since 1991. And if they need help with this drainage, we know some guys. Some of these lakes also make for parts of the natural borders with Belarus. Something which can't be said for the bulge around the town of Divanishkevs that is connected to the mainland, with a passage wide of less than 3 kilometers. Other lakes are used even better, like the Galb, which boasts one of the most memorable sites in Lithuania, Trakai Island Castle. Built amidst the glory days of Lithuania in the 15th century, today is an unmatched picture of a fantasy saga idyllic, only to be found in video games. Yet, it is a rare part of Lithuania that looks like a fairy tale you want to tell your smallest children because the lush forests that cover a third of the country root in a far different setting, an eerie tone amplified by the knowledge of history and the present. The true history starts in the 3rd millennium BC with the Baltic tribes arriving as the weather became more hospitable. Yet this area is perhaps more shrouded in secrecy than any other in Europe. Mostly because the Balts were too far even for the grasp of the Roman Empire. Although trade happened between the cultures as a part of the Amber Road. So, hidden by their unforgiving marches, the Balts resisted the influence of the Western culture. Simply going by with paying tributes to Vikings or the Kievan Rus to avoid raids. In the 13th century AD, the history of Lithuania as we know it today can be discussed as the German Teutonic Order moved east and conquered the areas of Estonia and Latvia, making the Lithuanian tribes unite. The only crowned king of Lithuania ever, Mindaugas, ruled the land from the year 1236 to 1263, and even though he was baptized as a Roman Catholic at the time of his coronation on 6th of July 1253, which is now the official state day in Lithuania, his country remained majority pagan past his reign and assassination. The country had no other kings, but had the equivalent, Grand Dukes and under them, the power of Lithuania grew. Grand Duke Jogalia accepted the offer of the Polish to become their king, married their monarch and converted his duchy to Christianity in 1386. To put it in a different perspective, this was only 106 years before the continent of America was discovered by the Europeans and in a way, the Baltics were the final frontier of the European continent. Battling formidable foes like the Golden Horde, Teutonic Knights and the Moscovites, Lithuania reached its peak under Vytotas the Great in the 14th century, becoming the largest country in Europe. Yet a new threat aroused in the east, the Moscovites grew stronger. Battling the Russians, forced Lithuanians closer to the Poles and the two entities formed one, a Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1569. The Federation was one of the largest and most populous countries in Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries. They enjoyed the Golden Age and resisted the Moscovites. Kings of Poland and Grand Dukes of Lithuania were elected by the nobility. Yet, as many did after, the Commonwealth made a mistake of taking the fight to Russia and losing Lithuanian territories. The Swedes descended onto the Baltics in the Northern Wars and in wars against the two powers, aided by the plague and famine, the Commonwealth lost 40% of its populace, resulting in the partition of the country by Russia, Prussia and Austria. After a brief time as a protectorate state of Russia, Lithuania ceased to exist in 1795. Taken by the Germans in the First World War, Lithuania regained its independence in 1918. For Lithuania, it became clear that World War I wasn't the war to end all wars, as they immediately battled the Soviets, the Bermontians and the Poles, who took Vilnius. In World War II, the Lithuanians proclaimed neutrality, but that wasn't of interest to the Soviets and then the Germans. And as the Third Reich took over, the extermination of a quarter million Jews living in Lithuania unraveled. And when the war finally ended, Lithuania fell under the USSR, had 5% of its population deported and stayed in it until its demise in 1990. Since then, Lithuania joined the European Union and NATO in 2004, and has been using Euro since 2015, after briefly returning to their own currency, Litas, in the post-Soviet era. Recently, it has used its position as a roadblock to Kaliningrad as the bargain ship for NATO's interest, which is severely endangering the country, and not only because most of Lithuania's imports came from Russia in 2019. Do you recall the decline in population we mentioned at the very start of this video? Well, it turns out it's a sinister one, as it is the country with the second fastest population decline projection, close to Bulgaria. 
It's estimated that the populace of Lithuania will shrink by 22.1% over the next 30 years, to just 2.1 million people, mostly due to mass migration. But the very interesting topic of why a country's population tends to decline when it's joining the European Union is a topic that might require its own video. Or perhaps the decline in population has nothing to do with that. And simply because people are running scared from sites like the Hill of Crosses and the Hill of Witches. Two pretty scary places you'll find in Lithuania, which are really on brand with the persistent pagan influences. And I've already mentioned that Lithuania is heights the pride, yet that can't be said of their men as the country is primarily known for its basketball players. Now, who is your favorite player from Lithuania? Tell me in the comments below in 3, 2, 1, now! While there are not many non-hooping Lithuanians known worldwide, the number of Americans with at least partial Lithuanian roots is amazing. Jason Sudeikis, Rose Namajunas, Robert Semekis, John C. Riley, and truly many others. Now, hopefully we haven't scared you too much of Lithuania with its eeriness, as this country really should be explored in person firsthand. Also, these potato dumplings thingies might be worth running into a pagan ritual or two in the deep forests of Lithuania.